welcome lovers and dreamers. You're here with Danae Dreams and I have a cool pick a card reading prepared especially for you. So before we get really intimate and involved, take a big deep breath in. And let it all out, okay? My intention for this experience that you are about to be involved with <laughs> is for you to feel safe on every level. I want you to feel safe spiritually, mentally, socially, emotionally, financially, sexually, and physically. Every single level of your being, of your energetic field, is going to feel, if you allow it, if you allow this to be felt, like you can finally bloom. Okay? So, that is my intention for me to bloom, for you to bloom, and if you are a man <laughs> who's tuning into my videos, my intention for you is to witness a bloom. <laughs> okay, so you have three cards to choose from. I'm going to get right into it. You have Pile 1, the Death card. Pile 2, the Moon Child card. And Pile 3, the Devil. And I actually want you to choose a card before you know what the topic is. Can you do that? So this is just like a surprise topic. I want you to pick a card first, one, two or three. And now that you have chosen and picked the one that your heart was set on, <laughs> the topic I have for you is, what kind of lover are you? So, join me in the reading. I would invite you to get something warm to drink. I would invite you to get something yummy to eat. And just like really get cozy. Because we're about to get into some good vibes. Welcome lovers. Pile one. Are you ready? <laughs> so... You chose the death card. Hmm. For what kind of love you are. And right off the bat, I'm getting like the energy of someone who goes through massive death and rebirth. So it's almost as if every single moon cycle, every single season, a new you is born from the ashes of the old you and the death card is like the perfect representation of the kind of love you are hmm. now I feel like the type of love you are can often get misunderstood by people and uh, the reason it gets that perspective from the wrong people is because you almost change with the wind but the right people are able to see that quality of you uh, as a gift as a surprise as something to be inspired by and amazed and a creative a creative person. I feel like that's the type of person you are, like really creative from the 
things you choose to wear although as soon as I said that I had a voice come through it's like well I can't you know wear the clothes I really want to wear because you know x y and z so that's something I encourage you to do is like if you were to design you know your Pinterest boards if you haven't got a Pinterest I would get one if you were to design your perfect wardrobe what you would wear every day the kind of clothes your casual clothes from your from the outfits you wear to maybe cook and clean even to working out to hang out with friends to going out to a party to every little detail create a Pinterest board that represents your style like specifically for the kind of person physically that you want to be and so you really can allow that creative expression to be personified and really like you're letting the world know who you are from the instant they meet you from the moment they meet you and then a week later you're wearing a different expression of your personality and that's the fun thing about you so yeah that's something I would recommend if you haven't already <sighs> okay now we also got the three of wands and in the three of wands I see a man that's just like standing there and he's like almost like waiting it looks like he's waiting <laughs> It's like he's looking out, but he's waiting. He's not actually making any action. He's almost like wondering if he should act. And I feel like that's the kind of lover you are. It's almost like people are hoping and wishing and like wanting to approach, but it's almost like there's like these barriers and these walls that you naturally have. It's like a, it's kind of like your standards really. <laughs> that kind of, it hold people at bay it's the highest fruit on a holy tree the kind to make you work hard for she then I dream so ready <laughs> okay now <laughs> you also got the seven of cups and it's another man <laughs> and there is it's almost like there's seven cups and he's like reaching out for one cup and this cup has like a river flowing out of it <laughs> and I feel like that's like the kind of lover you are in more ways than one <laughs> but it's almost like obvious you're obviously at the first choice it's like first pick first choice and it's like reaching out but he's not actually fully grabbing it. It's like, I want that one. Okay. And then you also got the Emperor. Now this is like, it's very interesting because three men came out of this, you know, straight up off the bat of your reading. And the Emperor energy I feel like these are the types of men that you attract. People who are already established, people who have their ish in order, people who take their career seriously, providers, uh, people that were naturally just would provide for you if you allowed them to. this card hmm. this card I'm not too sure but I think it's the devil card and it's almost like you tame people's 
they're the devil within them. You tame the beast within them. You, you make the beast into Prince Charming. And it's like, a, you know, I'm actually visualizing like <laughs> a man on a leash, but it's like he wants, <laughs> he's happy to have that around his neck. So that is the kind of lover that's coming through for you. Okay, you also got the lover's card. And it's literally the same kind of energy. I'm going to really bring this up close and personal for you so you can really see it. If you can see like the woman is like her head's like off to the side she's like looking away and he's all over her like trying to get all up in her energy and so it's <laughs> you've literally this has been your vibe like these are all there's a man in every card every single one of these and um take your <laughs> take your pick really uh that's the kind of vibe Okay, finally, we got some feminine energy. <laughs> okay, wow, what a beautiful card. You got the three of cups, and it's giving me like damsel, not distressed kind of vibes. It's almost like they should be terrified of you. Yeah, cool, no, I'm into those vibes. Okay. Now you got landscape and places. And on this deck, it's almost got like, you know, uh, the world on it, really. It's got different places in the world. It's got Paris. It's got China. It's got America. And then it's got this like, there's like, uh, like off Lion King, it's like the graveyard, that dark place that you're not supposed to go to. And I feel like that's where all the people lay that try and approach you, they should move. Okay, and it says, are you comfortable in your environment? Do you wish to explore new experiences and perspectives? Do you wish to escape from your present constraints? And actually what's coming through for me to deliver you is hmm, I want you to just imagine for a moment that there's a place where you would absolutely thrive. You would thrive like you've never thrived before. The kind of people you've always hoped were, were, were real. <laughs> they treated you exactly how you wanted to be treated. The kinds of neighbors, the kinds of the kind of home you want to live in, the kinds of shops you want to shop at, the kind of culture that really resonates with your soul. I feel like that is a place. Is a place that's kind of. I don't think it's fully come to your attention yet, but it will. And once this place reveals itself to you, this is the kind of move you're going to make where. Not only will you be a lover of in your relationships, but you'll be a lover of life. You'll be living a life that you love on each and every level. You're going to live the kind of lifestyle that you only dreamed was possible. And it's happening very soon. Sooner than you would expect. Okay. Now, you also got Lakshmi. Okay. And this is a card of fortune. And it's got the number 27. That's really drawing its attention to me right now. And she's literally got some coins like falling out of uh, these beautiful flowers. And hmm, I feel like the kind of lover you are is very quite expensive. Uh, Gifts is definitely your love language. If there was a love language, it's 100% gifts. And if any part of you is like, it's not gifts, I just want to remind you, it is gifts. And the reason it is gifts is because if you responded like that, it's definitely gifts. People may have just shamed you for wanting, you know, for naturally 
valuing gifts in the past. And I always feel like for me, the love language of gifts is someone put really a lot of thought into that gift to understand the kind of style you like, the kind of you know clothes that you would wear, the kind of color schemes that you, you naturally adorn yourself with, even the materials that really make you, you. And I feel like when someone gets the right kind of gift that compliments you as a person, it's such a, it's such a beautiful thing. Okay. Now, you also got Bridget, the goddess of the eternal flame. I am an eternal flame and each day my light grows brighter. Whew. I'm not actually getting like a fiery lover. I feel like you're not like an explosive lover that, that burns people like outwardly. I feel like you're like an ember, you know, you're like an ember that contains all of that heat, all of that fire, or all of that power within. And that's the type of lover that you really are. Okay. And I'd like to apologize. One of the neighbors has obviously decided to cut down a tree in the middle of this reading, uh, or use some kind of outdoor tool. <laughs> Which I appreciate that they're keeping their gardens really uh, well kept and maintained. I honestly appreciate that. But in terms of um, <laughs> this reading, I do apologize. <laughs> okay, so you also got the Four of Cups, which is contemplation and reevaluation. So I feel like there's something about the period you are in in your life where it's almost like you're kind of taking stock. What's working, what's not working? What's like bearing good fruit, what's not bearing good fruit? Who are the people that really light you up and make you feel like you're expensive and you love your life? And who are the people that you don't feel good after you hanged out with? Like really getting clear on those little details of your life. Uh, yeah. And especially when it does come to love, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to who, deserves to be in your company and who deserves uh, a seat on your table, a place in your life. It's like a, a level of deep worth and seeing your own value at a high level. So I support that, 100%. <laughs> okay, you also got the Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations, Tapestry of Life and Expression. Okay. This to me feels like, this to me feels like every one of your chakras is in perfect alignment. All of your feminine energy, your true expression of who you are and what you bring and, and just how you be, you know, how you be. Is, you've really been looking after yourself to a high degree and it shows in the way you speak to people, it shows in the way you speak you dress uh, it's undeniable at this point point. and lastly you got awakening and it's energetic upgrades a new way of being and integration and basically this actually came in reverse so it's almost like always reminds me of especially if you're turning into my energy I'm really quite like a sleeping beauty type of energy. <laughs> I'm like relaxation, <laughs> peace and harmony, zen. Uh, I feel like that's like something you so naturally do and you're good at creating a safe space and a comforting, loving environment. So if anyone was to be allowed into that space, it's like heaven. It's like comfort, it's like care, it's like nurture and soothing their soul type of energy. And yeah, that is your reading, pile one, number one. <laughs> um, it's been an honor and a privilege to read for you. And as always, the goddess in me sees the goddess in you. Danae dreams.
Falcon Pile 2. You chose the Moonchild card. So, hmm. immediately I want to soften into stillness and soften my body and my voice. Like there, there, you're safe now. You're safe to be who you really are. You're safe to just be. No need to worry, no need to stress. Here, allow me to take all your worries and all of your stress and all of your fears and all of the things that are weighing heavy on your heart. Allow me to just, allow me just to hold it for a moment. I'm going to put it to the side. And let's just create an environment where you can just take off the armor for the day. Allow yourself to Remove all of the heaviness, all of the stuff that you have to put on your shoulders and wear to protect yourselves out in the world. The type of lover you are, Pile 2, is the type of lover that when they come home, they literally come home. You are their home away from home. You are their soulless. You are their peace. You are that place that they find. And they go to just rest. That's the kind of energy and the impact you so femininely create for them. Moon child energy. Wow. There's such a softness. I just feel like everything about me is just like softening. I feel like I just, you know, any stress, any worries, any pain, anything that was hurting me and my heart and anything that was heavy or the pressure that I may be carrying that's not mine all of the concerns that I have. Your energy, the type of lover you are, allows him to just like remove <laughs> everything. This is like a bearing, bearing your soul, like your true self to a person. That's the type of love you offer. I don't even want to go to the next card because <laughs> This energy feels so incredible. As I look into the eyes of this cat, it's almost like I see into her eyes and the reason you're able to hold people here is because you've been through things. It's because you've, you've experienced deep the depths of negative emotions at times, the depths of depression, despair or disaster. You've experienced those depths so you can meet them there and then you can help them find their way up and out of there. Now you also got the four of wands and in this card there is two women and they're literally like uh they've got it looks like flowers or flowers in their hands so it looks like they're doing a flower arrangement like a wedding arrangement or just like 
it's like the most feminine thing I've ever seen. It's like two women just kind of like in in a field with flowers or they might be grapes, but just like, you know, getting things all prepared and ready. Hmm. Feels like quite a traditional kind of lover. Okay. You also got the Eight of Cups and as, as I've said that, it started to rain outside. It's starting to pour. <laughs> And so I, I feel like you have that kind of effect on people. It's almost like all of the weight, all of the pain, all of the pressure that they've been containing inside, your, your energy is like a floodgate. <laughs> all of their And they might not cry in your presence, but that's like an internal release happens that's really healthy for them. So, the Eight of Cups, and this just looks like someone walking along the beach. And towards the sun. Now you also received the moon. Hmm. And what an interesting card if you can see that. There is a story in Egypt about Judgment Day, the afterlife. And as far as I'm aware, the original story is this. When you die, the story in Egypt was when you died, you would go to this place and it was Judgment Day. And it was like the justice symbol with the two, uh, two containers, let's call them, two weights to be able to weigh your heart you're supposed to put your heart on one side and it would be weighed against the feather of truth okay and so this is something I actually do every morning as I weigh my heart I visualize myself getting my heart and putting it on this this weight and putting it against this feather of truth and if your heart was good <laughs> it would either do one of two things which was also meaning that you would be able to go to the afterlife. If your heart was good and pure, it would either stay equal to the, to the feather of truth, so you would be able to go to the afterlife, or if your heart was like, like really good, <laughs> you would go to like a higher levels of heaven, which is like heaven of heavens of heaven, and your heart would actually be lighter than the feather, okay? And so, there's something so pure about your heart that if you were to weigh your heart against that feather of truth, it would fly. And your lovers naturally know that about you, the pureness of your heart. And because it's so pure and it's so true, You may get different responses from people. Some people may be highly intimidated by it because you're so in your truth. Some people may be highly inspired and highly in love with your heart and the person you are because it reflects back to them that same goodness because they're good. Or, you know, there's multiple ways people can respond to someone with such a pure heart, such a true heart. And I think a little exercise I would like to offer you, if you can visualize that justice, that justice symbol, and having these, you're weighing people that you know their heart against the feather, and seeing where they, where they land. If their heart, in fact, is heavier than the, the feather of truth, 
I guess it might be a sign to you that that person isn't serving you in your life. Um, or a shift in perspective needs to occur on some way. Either your perspective of them or some kind of a shift needs to happen, okay? Because one thing that I've learned along my journey is I can identify someone that isn't good for me and qualities that I don't want in my life. But something powerful I can do is remove it out of my field. So imagining myself saying, no, I don't want that. But then not only just banishing it, removing it, repelling it and rejecting it, but then I allow it to transform. I transform it. And I transform that energy. I either brighten, lighten, uh, and transform it. And then I say, I allow it back in as it's, the gift of that energy, the greatest gift it could give me. And that's such a powerful technique to do because once you're able to see that every single moment, there is a gift within that. Uh, I mean, that's what a positive mindset's about. So yeah, that's a little technique they can use. So identifying something that you don't like, because it doesn't belong to you, right? If there's something that you feel bad about or you don't like, it doesn't belong to you. Because you, your natural energy is pure and good. So if anything's like stuck onto your in your field, stuck into your vibrational escrow, <laughs> stuck into your, you know, it's, it's just like having something stuck on you that actually isn't you. It's like a spot, a label that someone put on you. And that label isn't who you are. And so you remove that label and you say, no, that doesn't belong to me. Because it doesn't. And then once you've removed it out of your field, then you can shift, sh change and transform it, brighten and lighten it. And then say, I allow the energy back, but transformed in the light of love, the light of God, the light of goodness, and give me the greatest gift that that energy could be. You're transforming it. You are evolving it in a way. Okay, so pure heart. We also have this card, which I have no idea. <laughs> it's just a picture, but I have no idea what kind of, uh, what it is. So if anyone has an idea of what this card represents, but it's got a lady with a blindfold and she's got a head, which kind of reminds me of having, having like a mask. A mask yeah and because the lady with the blindfold has got tears running down her face and so I think sometimes you hide your own pain and you hide your own the, the things that you're going through and put on a brave face put on a smile put on put on a I guess a happy persona so you don't have to essentially burden other people because you, you know you, they might not be able to handle it or they might not have space to hold your pain um but i'm i'm feeling like encouraging you to seek out people who have space for all of you and i think that would be really healthy find people who you can express those things to and who are happy to listen um, and have the time to, the time for you, you know? Who, who has time for you? Who has time to help you? Those are the kinds of people that deserve to be in your life. Okay. I went to pick up this card. It was almost like, it, like, it, like a slamming. It was like, kind of wants my attention. Like, damn right. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, it's like a, a matter of fact kind of energy. Like, don't you disrespect me? Don't you treat me bad? <laughs> you know, it's like a. Uh, yeah, it's like snappy actually. It's quite snappy. And hmm, I feel like that's the kind of uh, thing that you haven't allowed anyone to fully see when you're going through stuff, when you're experiencing those moments of turbulence or of inner, you know, inner pain or of fears, 
it's almost like you may have grown up in a household that kind of rejected your emotions and so you're used to taking on other people's emotions but it's also it's a it's a symbiotic you are allowed to share that as well and you may think you don't want to share bad emotions you don't want to share bad news you don't want to share bad times and the truth is you don't but once you are able to feel safe enough just to share it and open up and be vulnerable the right people will be able to hold space and see the beauty within your experience and and show you back that beauty shine that back to you okay you also got the death card oh death what's coming through there may have been a period in your life where you almost romanticized death and you saw it as kind of like I think these are the kinds of dark thoughts you may have sometimes. And these are the kinds of things you're afraid to share with people. Like no one wants to hear about this. No one wants to know this. But I, I'm encouraging you to share with someone you feel safe to share this with. And I promise you on the other side of it is liberation. The truth literally will set you free. It is The, the truth is love. That is something I, I know to be a fact, is that when you share your truth, you will be liberated. No matter how dark you may have you know, perceived that truth to be. And you deserve to be free. Okay, now you also got the Six of Cups. And this is like uh, one of my decks, it's like a vampire deck. And there's something about you allowing, you know, receiving other people's energy, receiving their gifts, receiving their good words, receiving. So, there's something about you that kind of stops yourself from receiving. There's like a, no, not too much. Don't make me too, feel too good about myself. Don't praise me too greatly. Don't tell me I'm that, you know. It's like a, you almost minimize and like, uh, don't fully receive their compliment. Don't fully receive their, you know. Wow, you're so talented. I can't believe how talented you are. That's crazy. I believe you should go for that. I believe in you and I believe you should fucking go all in on that. And I feel like really when someone gives you these compliments, let it in. Let those compliments in. Let them water your garden of your mind. Allow them to tend to the heart of your <laughs> the heart you have, that beautiful pure heart. Tend to it and nurture it and care for it. Because these types of comments, these kinds of genuine praise, and just understand it's genuine praise. Allow that genuine praise in. It's good for you. It will build you. It will build you. Okay. You also got my favorite number, 37. And it says leadership. You are no longer the supporting cast. You are the leading man or woman. Take the initiative and lead the way for others to follow. You will be judged by the company you keep and those you admire. Ooh. You will be judged by the company you keep and those you admire. Take the initiative and lead the way for others to follow. <sighs> this is something that I want to share with you. And 
I've shared this in another one of my paper card readings before, but it's coming through again. And that same phrase is, do not, do not cast pearls, do not cast pearls to swine. Do not give dogs what is holy. Do not cast pearls to swine. Do not give dogs what is holy. And it's a concept of don't plant seeds in people's gardens that aren't going to water them. But there's like a new level of, of this perspective that's wanting to come through. It's almost like don't underestimate the fact that that seed has been planted and they might not be able to water them right now but it's sitting there and one day in the future they might look back on that moment and they can finally see the gold they can finally see the goodness out of that experience they can finally see the the beautiful flower that bloomed from that gift that you gave them and that has been true for me in my life many times where I've looked back and I have a new lens. I have had life experiences that have taught me to see with new eyes, hear with new ears, understand at a deeper level that I wasn't able to, you know, fully understand back when I was younger. And so it's almost like don't underestimate your ability to lead, your ability to empower speak life into people your ability to deliver your unique gifts to them and for them to maybe not fully understand the true value and the worth of that gift until later down the track but don't don't stunt yourself from sharing that goodness that you have but also at the same time because we're all about balance don't just go sharing more than you have to give at times Okay. You also got Dementa. It's the nurture card. So coming full circle back around to that original energy, the original nurturing essence that you have. <sighs> so beautiful. There's something about you learning to uh, learning to own how you are a leader. And you lead by the way you nurture, you lead by the way you care, you lead by your more feminine qualities and really allowing that to be, to be how you lead. It's a form of leadership that is needed in the world. And it's not only needed in people's lives and people's relationships like the lover you are and, you know, in, in families and in communities, but People need to see that more. Okay. You also receive Saint Bridget, Our Lady of Exalted Light. I give endlessly because the light is without end. My soul is all I need. There's something about the way that you love that is like this. It's almost you give and you give and you give. And you give and you give and you give. But at the same time, you must always be able to receive. Allow yourself to receive those compliments. Allow yourself to receive payments for your great work. Allow yourself to receive those things that you deep down want to receive. And this moment, I'm like, you deserve to say yes to the things that you love. You deserve to say yes. Actually, yes. Actually, I want that and I'm going to say yes. That is the vibe. I'm learning this and you're learning this. <laughs> okay. We also have the Queen of Swords, self-reliant and perceptive. I think this comes back around to self-reliant, Queen of Swords. I think this is how you have learned to defend yourself in relationships. It's with your words. You've got skills at using your words to cut at the right angle and cut off and out the bullshit. You know, really be specific and and don't cut into something that is good, but you're able to cut, cut, you know, and remove that, that shit. I don't want it and I'm not going to take it, so no. But you can still see the goodness that 
is there. Okay. Activated earth, power places, ley lines, trust where you are led. Hmm. Sacred, 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 safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. I literally have a vision of women and they are holding hands and they're like literally like chanting and they're like sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, safe. Sacred, sacred, and it's like a whisper and then it becomes a chant and they're like in a circle and it's like this this like a uh, powerful force of energy it's like sacred sacred safe sacred sacred safe and it's like you all start chanting and chanting and chanting and it gets higher and higher and higher and the energy starts elevating and this is the kind of feminine power that you hold and it's also the kind of feminine leadership that I feel like you will be known for okay now you also received last and but not least the warrior woman if you weren't afraid what would you do this is the message this is the type of lover you are you are unapologetic and afraid to love unafraid to love unafraid to share that love but at the same time you must be learning to be unafraid to receive that love unafraid to let it in I'm, sp I'm, I'm preaching to a choir and myself as I say this. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful reading that I am honored and grateful to share with you. Thank you for choosing me as your reader. That is a little phrase I got from one of my favorite readers, Tara with Tay. She has been one of my biggest inspirations in the last year. Uh, so yeah, shout out to her. As always, the goddess in me sees the goddess in you, Danae Dreams. Welcome, pile three. You have chose the devil. Devil in a designer drip. Devil in a designer dress. Oh, okay. So, you are the type of lover that is the baddest bitch on the clap. And on the block <laughs> you're the type of lover who has an attitude on nana <laughs> you're the type of lover who who puts people in their place uh, if they don't come correct it's almost like a shock to you if people even approach incorrectly that's the type of lover and the energy that's coming through <sighs> yeah I see like a, like a snap snap, <laughs> like a, <laughs> that's the vibe that's coming out. Okay, but they like it. <laughs> you got the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, so it's like you being you and you being in your power, you being in this uh, unapologetic, this is who I am, take it or leave it kind of energy has people delivering their pentacles on a platter, on, on a silver platter, because of this energy. Okay. You also got the Nine of Cups. Uh, what is that song? She got her own money, she don't need no. She got her own money, she don't need no. I think it's a Sweetie song. It's the best friend song, Sweetie and Dodger Cat. Dodger Cat, yeah. You got the Hermit card, okay. I think there's something about you that attracts these types of individuals. Uh, these wise men. <laughs> mm -hmm. You also received this beautiful card and this is like one of the solar plexus cards in this particular deck uh, it almost looks like a a cups card the queen of cups queen of cups 
there's something about your energy that's almost like uh, undescribable and it's like an anomaly you, they just can't quite put their finger on what it is about you that's so unique and different they just know it's something but they don't know what exactly it is because it's almost like if they as soon as they think they know they're actually they find out something else about you and they're like well I never knew that and then as soon as they think they know it's the same kind of thing it's almost like a riddle or a puzzle <laughs> uh, the word Jack's position is coming through I don't actually know what that me word means so you might have to google it in. do you know that it's almost when I'm looking at this picture it's like who me who me but it's almost like she's doing it in like a, a mocking way or like a funny way it's like who me like she doesn't know what she's doing but she does okay you also got the judgment card so when I see this I, as I'm really focused on these two X's it's like X X I see uh, almost like <laughs> your exes like in graves. I'm literally visualizing them like six feet under, <laughs> like with a little headstone for all your exes. Like this ex and this ex is like, they're like, they're gone. Like it's like a dead to me energy. Uh, and I just see one of the exes trying to like, <laughs> I don't know, like a zombie trying to get out of the grave. <laughs> And you like see it and you're like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> like your your powers like shh, shh, put them back in the put them back down <laughs> down down in the ground, you know. <laughs> mm, it's like once you're at X there's no next. <laughs> I'm not too sure what that means, but that's what is getting channeled. You also got this card which literally looks like it looks like a death card. Um, it looks like really dark, actually. Really, really dark. <sighs> There's something about your aggressiveness. I want to say it's aggressive. You think it's just you being you. It may be perceived as aggressive at times, but I think it, it's almost like you can't deny it as aggressive. Or assertive would be the the positive side of that energy if you would like to call it assertive that kind of highlights the demons of others just naturally because of your strong boundaries and your strong energy it, it highlights their inner demons it highlights their inner turmoil it highlights their inner the inner things that they have going in their life that is uh, out of order Kali Ma actually came into my mind and I almost, I asked should I share the name and then she granted me access to share her name which was like you know okay Kali Ma and it's this energy of like a destructive force but the destroying what is not good burning away that which does not serve that person that's the type of lover you are it's like <sighs> it's like a really detailed very highly critical and picky kind of like no 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 that's wrong that's wrong that's wrong uh it's giving me virgo perfectionist kind of energy even if you no, i really just it gives me that type of perfectionist energy so if that's not in your chart somewhere eh, i'd be surprised you also got games do you feel that you need more fun and play in your life is someone playing games in your working or personal life? Do you need a game plan to improve your status or direction? Really highlighting the word status. Status, status, status. Raising your ranks and raising your status. Raising your ranks and raising your status. Raising your ranks and raising your status. Status, status, status. There's, it's like growing that energy of status, state state status state status state there's something here that wants to come out i'm just gonna 
seek this energy, seek and you shall find, ask and it will be given, knock and it will be opened. If you were not aware, I'm an energy healer, I work with energy, I do mirror work, I do healing work, I do energies, I, I do emotional work, I do all of the kinds of like healing modalities that you can think of, that's what I do. And so when there is an undefined object or energy in the room or in the reading that I can't quite reach fully, I'm going to seek it and I'm going to pull it and I'm going to find it and then I'm going to deliver it to you in the best way. And so what I had a vision of was, <laughs> it really felt like, it sounds so ridiculous, but I'm going to share it with you. Imagine there was like a pile of absolute shit okay and literally there was just this pile of shit <laughs> like this pile of dirt and I just went in and put my hand into it and I digged for what was the truth within that that shitty situation that shitty experience that shitty life that you may have had this is what's coming out uh, and I I pulled it out <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, oh my gosh, look at me doing this dirty work for you. My goodness, you are lucky that I'm doing this. And I'm like washing my arm because I just did some dirty work for you. And then I delivered it. And I'm like, what was in there? And I'm just washing it all off. And then I go like this. And I'm like, okay, what was the gold? What was the diamond? What was the the valuable piece of information within that shitty experience. And if I was to close my eyes and really tap, tap, tap into the best and the greatest gift within that shitty experience is that the shitty, really it feels like a shitty, a shitty ex. The one that was trying to like uh, dig himself up out of that, the zombie one <laughs> that you had to like put back down in the ground, that the, the gold or the, <sighs> there's something like that needs to be, seen for you so I'm finding it right now hmm. it's almost like it's turning into dust and it's turning into sand in my hands like I was like I reached and I found the best thing about it and the best thing about it is that it turned to dust the best thing about it is that it's no longer in your life the best thing about that experience is that now you know the type of people to stay the F away from and never allow into your life. And that is the lesson that came through. Caught it, got it, you know, lock it in. <laughs> you know, there's like no resurrection spells happening for this one, okay? <laughs> Let's not resurrect that which is done. Okay, you also got Maya. And you got illusion. Okay. The type of lover you are. I'm seeing someone that can quite easily live in fantasy and romanticize. Even though there's like this hard kind of bad bitch exterior, there's this like internal lover and this internal fantasy Disney type of character that comes out every now and then. And it's like that's a that's a part of you. You're in a child, you're in a teenager that you kind of protect and not many people actually see this side of you not many people are granted access to really to this place within you uh, and I feel like it's because of those experiences that you've had those those people that you've met along your path that kind of put a sour or bitter taste in your mouth and I'm just telling you now don't allow their actions, their words, to make you bitter, okay? That's their bitterness. That's their sourness. That's their bad energy. That's their shit. <laughs> That's their bad vibes. That's theirs, okay? And so really like separating yourself completely and wholeheartedly and fully from those kinds of people and like saying, okay, never again, not in any lifetime, not in, <laughs> you know, like no like flashbacks to the past. What's done is done, what's dead is dead, and really like honoring that that's, that's a chapter that's gone. Yeah. Oh, we're really getting down in the ground with this. Okay. 
Now, the, the whole vibe is what type of lover you are. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. But it's coming through and I'm just like, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. And it's like, but it's coming through. It's coming through. It's coming through. It wants to be seen. It wants to be revealed. It wants to be uncovered for you in this moment. So I'm almost going to like show you my arm. <laughs> it's like really weird. But it feels like, you know, it's like a hidden piece of you. It's like, that cost me an arm and a leg, literally. And it's like, oh my God, like, because you were holding on to that past, you know, you had your hand all up in that shit. <laughs> you had your hand, like, clinging on to something that was dead and gone. It's almost like it did cost you an arm and a leg because you were, it costed you because you weren't letting go of it and it costed you because it almost didn't allow you to start moving on and moving forward. So now we're gonna, you know, washing it off, understanding that you got your arm back, you got two arms, you got two legs, you got both, you can move, you can, you can do what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. You also got Yi Moja, the goddess of all that flows. I am an ocean of creative energy. I give birth to what exists within me. Okay, okay. I almost wanted to call you okay girlfriend and it was like okay I just did it I'm gonna call you a girlfriend that was the energy that it was like I wanted to say <sighs> but she this goddess is like this I'm gonna sh I'm gonna do exactly what she's in entailing me to do so Yemoja allow me to be a vessel for your guidance and your truth to channel through There's like, how dare he? There's like, someone's like, how dare he? There's like, voice wants to come out, like, how dare he? Like, I don't want to do, I don't like doing accents because I don't want to offend anyone's cultures that I don't know I'm offending. So I'm not going to do the accent that wants to come through me, but I'm going to filter it through my personality and filter it through my essence. And the, the, really, it, it, but I will say what she's leading me to say. And it's like, how dare he? How dare he treat you like that? How dare he forget you like that? It's like, you're not a forget me. And that's like, you're not, what is like a forget me not? Forget me not, forget me not. How dare he? That's like, it's like some, it's like some really, uh, it's like a friend coming through, a, a genuine friend, even if it's not a real friend, it's like someone that really has your back. That's really like, how dare he? If only you knew, like, he doesn't deserve even a second of your time. He doesn't deserve even a moment. He doesn't deserve to even look you in the eye, to even hear that beautiful voice of yours. He doesn't deserve that. And that's, like, what's, like, getting pounded into this conversation. It's, like, I can feel someone, like, packing a punch. They're, like, packing a punch. This, this is the type of friend that would fight to the death for you and would fight someone, like, for... You know if they try to do something so that's what's coming through it's like how dare you <laughs> it's like the kind of it's the kind of uh friend that you like to have because she's got not only got your back she's got your front she's got your left she's got your right <laughs> she's the type of friend that is not going to allow someone to disrespect you or treat you bad so it's like a how dare he <laughs> and she would fight for that interesting yeah I like that those are the types of people you want to have around you people that remind you who you are and who you ain't remember remind you who you are and who you are not you're not that type of girl to you know get caught up in that you're not that type even if you experience that doesn't don't take that at, don't make that don't make their red-handed actions yours you got clean hands <laughs> yeah Okay, now we also got the Spirit of Caps, Opportunity and Creativity. <sighs> What's coming through? Hmm. Opportunity. 
opportunity and creativity. Is this a secret talent that you have or a secret dream, a secret gift that you haven't really shared with anyone? This feels like a secret, a secret creative project, a secret, uh, a secret dream, a secret dream that we're going to uncover, okay? I want you to imagine that we have a beautiful gift and it's in my hands. This is what my grandmother used to do with me. She was like, come look, I've got something to show you. I've got something to show you. And she was like, come quick, look, it's a fairy. It's a fairy. And I'm like, you don't have a fairy. And then I literally would always go and have a look just in case. And then she would like, come and then she would hug me. And then she would give me all these kisses. And so, <laughs> yeah, that's such a beautiful energy. That may, be, that may be the energy that wanted to come through. Some kind of older caregiver or a person who really you really respected in your life that is, you know, is reminding you. How, you know, how dare he? She's coming through. It's almost like all of the women, uh, your friends, your older ancestors are coming through and they're all like, how dare he? And how... You know, don't you allow that to be the end of you. Don't you allow that to be where you end. Remember what you're made of. Remember where you came from. Remember the DNA that is within you. The bones that you have within you. Remember. This is like a Lion King moment. And I'm not going to like downplay it. I'm not going to downplay it. When people's ancestors come through, it's powerful. And I feel really honored that they have chosen to visit. <laughs> I feel like the friend that's like, <laughs> that's like, can be like really loud. But when your family are around, like I kind of like quieten down and like, there's like a respect level I have for your family. That makes me kind of like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, you also get empathetic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours, okay? Absorbing what's not yours. I think you've gotten really good at putting walls up. You've gotten really good at creating the barricade. You've created the wall, created the, you know, mother, no, 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 <laughs> like, a, you're not getting in here, a no, no, no kind of energy. However, I feel like there still needs to be a door that opens fully for the good okay like when good knocks on your door when the good news when good people when good vibes when good influences when uh, all of that beautiful you, I, you know when love knocks on your door when abundance knocks on your door that's when you like open that door open the curtains open the windows you can let that in okay uh, but still honoring the fact that you learned how to discern when something that was knocking on your door wasn't coming correctly, wasn't coming with that good intentions, wasn't coming with those good energies and the good vibes, was actually coming with sinister, sinister energy. And you were kind of like, oh, I don't like that. Okay, I don't like that. And you can't, you know, that's when you don't open the door to that. And you learned that and I respect that. Okay, and lastly, you got Akasha, your guidance is divinely guided. Your guidance is divinely guided. Okay, Akasha. Hmm. That is the end of your reading. I really want to end it here. I want to end it on this beautiful note. This beautiful note with the voice of your ancestors, the voice of those friends, the voice of the, the woman who are saying, remember what you deserve and never forget it, okay? As always, the goddess in me sees the goddess in you, Danae Dreams. <laughs>